Hello, I'm Andy Millard, and welcome to TFAC Talks. Uh, we don't know much about how much longer we're going to be needing to maintain this social distancing, so the folks at the Tryon Fine Arts Center thought that this would be a good opportunity to check in via Zoom with some of the fascinating folks in the Tryon area who are involved in the arts in some way or another, and we are so so lucky to have with us today an amazing accomplished actor she was classically trained in the uk somehow made her way to the us has appeared off broadway off off broadway in regional and stock theater in films on tv she does voiceover work she's a dialect coach for other actors I know this because she has coached me, <laughs> and one of the things that I find most fascinating about her is that she is very much in demand as a narrator of audiobooks. At this point, she has narrated over 55 books and counting. So, with that, welcome Rosalind Ashford. How are you, and what did I miss? Oh, gosh. In introduction. <laughs> I think you uh, covered just about everything. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Oh, I am so glad to have you. You have had such a wide-ranging career spanning both sides of the Atlantic. How did you end up in the Carolina foothills? Um, that's, a, that's a long story. My husband and I, I met him actually in the Caribbean, but he's from New York, and I was living in New York at that time. And we spent our marriage years in New York, but knew that when he retired, we wanted to get out of the cold winters and the New York taxes. Yeah. So South Carolina was our choice. He's a big golfer, which is where he is right now. And we wanted seasons, but not extremes. And we just absolutely adore this part of the country. It's wonderful. Well, you picked the right place, I think. I uh you're right. You're right. <laughs> what What would you consider to be some of the highlights of your, I mean, varied career as a performer? <laughs> I think in retrospect, and my career was the beginning of my life and this part of my life. The mm. middle part, life took over and I actually decided that uh, I wasn't going to make Broadway anytime soon because I'm not a singer. Um, so I, life took over and I had other careers in between. But when my husband and I were planning on moving down here, I thought, well, we live in New York. Let's give it one more try with the professional scene in New York City. So I did. And uh, I was very lucky to get an off-Broadway show right out of the gate. And I think it's because women of my age have either made it or given up. So unlike when you're 20 and there's 300 that all look like you right. and are equally as talented, um, when you get a little older, the, the pool is a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. a little bit smaller. Yeah. So I, I went back in to, um, to theater mostly in New York just before we left about mm -hmm. five or six years ago. Yeah. And, I guess that uh, that worked out. You enjoyed that, but it still didn't keep you from coming here. It didn't. Um, it was fun, but I remembered why I gave up the business. It's it's a very difficult business. Yeah. And we lived in the Hudson Valley, which was about an hour and 45 minutes by train. I so I would spend three, four hours traveling oh. for a two-minute audition. And after a while, I thought, why am I doing this? So coincidentally at the same time I had been doing a lot of uh, radio and voice work which mm -hmm. because I had the setup I could do from home I happened to get a gig with Disney to uh, narrate one of their new uh, interactive books uh, the Aristocats I see. and that led that led to a producer hearing it and asking me if I would do some audiobooks now I had already done a few for um, a, a, an outfit a production house in the Hudson Valley but I thought why not so we give that a try and that became my niche and I, I whilst I still love theater because that's how I was trained as a classical actress I find the 
uh, the audiobook world to satisfy the performance aspect of mm -hmm. my craft, but but it's also because I do it here in my <laughs> little padded cell. Looks like it's about uh, the size of a phone booth. It is. It's like the TARDIS. You know, it's, it's, it looks like a phone booth from the outside, but when I come inside, it's a whole world. So I am able to um, act. I'm, I self-direct. And depending who I'm working for, whether it's a production house with a staff or an indie author, I also can be the producer. So I then edit and produce and uh, master the files that I send off. But mm -hmm. the nice thing is... Actually, the production houses I work for don't even know I'm not still in New York because everything is digital these days. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know you've done a little bit of acting in this area as well since you've been here. I have seen your one woman uh, staged reading of Shirley Valentine. Uh, loved it. That is Thank such you. an interesting character. What drew you to that particular role? Oh, she, she is just delightful. There's, there's not that many uh, one-woman shows or, or really meaty roles in the mm -hmm. repertoire that lend themselves to that intimate staged reading setting, which is absolutely perfect at TFAC. Yeah. It's, it's set on the stage. It's, it's a play that is so intimate and so carefully crafted yeah. that I feel as though the audience is in my kitchen and I think the audience feels that they're in my kitchen. And so that, that, that intimacy is, is so perfect for that, that character and that play, which is a fabulously written play. It, really is. it, has, it has so many twists and turns and so many levels to it that our universal, even though it was written back in the 80s, it's universal to today. It's, yeah. It happens to be set in Liverpool, but it could just as easily be try-on. Uh, it's, it's really a remarkable play, and it's such a treat. It was on yeah. my bucket list. I'm sort of pushing the envelope for my age to do this role. But then I thought, well, you know, actually, maybe I'm not pushing it that much because it's such so. a universal message, yeah. and yeah. it's a lovely play. Really and you can tell I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Well... I am a huge fan of you, and oh. I really appreciate you coming and talking with me today. That, and folks, that's about going to wrap it up for this edition of TFAC Talks with Rosalind Ashford. She is planning to do a repeat performance of Shirley Valentine that's as part of the Tryon Fine Arts Center's Stage Door series on September 29th, 2020. Of course, this is all uh, depending on how things go with the coronavirus stuff. But tickets are $10, and all previously purchased tickets will be honored. So um, I have seen this show, by the way, and Rosalind is great in the role. Funny, touching, relatable. Can I just add that uh, the director, Catherine Gillette... Uh, yes, oh yes. Without her... I don't think we would have delved into all the very, very varied levels of this play. So I, I, it's really a, a duo, not, not a, a solo performance. Well, I'm glad you mentioned her because I am going to be talking with her in another one of our talks. So we'll, we might uh, even touch on this subject as well. So if you're interested in going to see the, uh, the, show Shirley Valentine. You can get all the latest information on our website, tryonarts.org. Rosalind, thank you again so much for being with us. It's my pleasure, Andy, and stay safe, everybody. Yes, and thank you for watching. For all the folks at Tryon Fine Arts Center, I'm Andy Millard, and we'll see you next time.